Ever had a couple of drinks the night before a run and then felt like you were running through sand the next morning? You're not imagining it. The question is, does alcohol actually affect your running performance? The short answer is yes, absolutely, and not in a good way. Today we're going to do a deep dive into exactly what alcohol does to your body from the moment you drink it, and how that translates to slower times, harder runs, and stalled progress. Let's start with the most immediate problem. Alcohol absolutely tanks your recovery. After a tough workout, your muscles need to repair and grow. This process is called muscle protein synthesis. Alcohol directly suppresses the main pathway responsible for this, called mTOR. Studies show that even a moderate amount of alcohol, think three or four drinks after training, can slash your muscle protein synthesis by up to 30% for a full 24 hours. For you as a runner, that means slower recovery between your sessions, a higher risk of injury because your body isn't repairing itself properly, more muscle soreness. And ultimately, your training progress grinds to a halt. Next up, your sleep quality completely collapses. Alcohol might help you fall asleep faster, but it's a trap. It wrecks your REM sleep and breaks up your deep sleep into fragmented, useless chunks. You get more junk sleep and miss out on the restorative cycles that are crucial for recovery. The impact on your running is immediate. Your run the next day will feel way harder. Your body won't restore its glycogen stores properly. Your reaction time and coordination will be off. And if you use a wearable, you'll see it in the data. A lower heart rate variability and a higher resting heart rate. This brings us to our third point. Your entire aerobic system takes a massive hit. First, your resting heart rate goes up. Alcohol activates your sympathetic nervous system, your fight or flight response, which means your next run will feel harder at any given pace. Your heart is already working overtime before you even lace up your shoes. It also temporarily reduces your maximal aerobic capacity, your VO2 max. This happens because alcohol lowers your blood plasma volume and makes oxygen transport less efficient, all while causing lactate to build up faster. And if that wasn't enough, alcohol messes with your body's thermostat. It causes your blood vessels to widen, pushing blood to your skin. You lose heat faster, which is a huge problem. In cold weather, this increases your risk of hypothermia. In hot weather, it means you overheat much quicker. Your body just can't regulate its core temperature effectively. Point number four, alcohol dehydrates you more than you realize. It's a diuretic, meaning it makes you pee more. It does this by blocking a hormone called vasopressin, which tells your kidneys to hold on to water. The result is increased urine output, lower blood volume, and a messed up electrolyte balance. For your run, this translates to lower endurance, a higher heart rate, cramping, and you'll burn through your energy stores way faster. Even just one or two drinks can leave you 2 to 3% dehydrated the next morning, and performance already measurably drops at just 2% dehydration. Number five, your glycogen stores, which are the primary fuel for your runs, refill much more slowly. Alcohol directly interferes with the process of restoring carbohydrate stores in your muscles and liver. It blocks the liver from releasing glucose and diverts all its energy to metabolizing the alcohol, which your body sees as a poison and prioritizes getting rid of above all else. It also reduces your insulin sensitivity. The impact is that your legs feel heavy and dead the next day, because you literally have less fuel in the tank. Let's talk about coordination. Your reaction time, balance, and proprioception, your body's awareness of itself in space, all get worse. Even small amounts of alcohol will impair your motor skills. This is a huge deal for trail runners navigating tricky terrain, for anyone doing speed work, or for runners on technical descents during a race. You are simply more likely to misstep, twist an ankle, or fall. Point seven is a big one. Your immune system gets suppressed. Intense training already puts stress on your immune system. Alcohol adds another layer of suppression by reducing the activity of your natural killer cells, increasing inflammation, raising stress hormones like cortisol, and lowering the function of your infection-fighting lymphocytes. When you combine more inflammation with worse sleep and worse recovery, you're creating the perfect storm for getting sick more often. Number eight, your hormone balance gets completely messed up. Alcohol drops your testosterone, increases cortisol, 
and decreases the release of growth hormone during sleep. It also fires up inflammation markers throughout your body. This hormonal cocktail is the exact opposite of what you want as a runner trying to adapt and improve. It's a recipe for going backward, not forward. Because of all these neurological and muscular impacts, your running form itself suffers. This isn't just in your head, it's measurable. Next day effects include a shorter stride length, reduced power output, a lower cadence, and sloppier foot placement. Your body just can't execute the coordinated movements of running as efficiently. And what if you run with alcohol still in your system? That's just dangerous. You'll have impaired judgment, weaker thermoregulation, faster dehydration, a higher heart rate, less available glucose for energy, and terrible balance. It's a risk that's simply not worth taking, especially in extreme weather. So, let's get to a question I get asked all the time. Will regular drinking also reduce my VO2 max over time? The answer is a resounding yes. It's not just about hangovers making runs feel harder. Alcohol literally interferes with the physiological systems that your VO2 max depends on. First, as we mentioned, alcohol reduces your blood plasma volume. VO2 max is heavily dependent on your stroke volume, how much blood your heart can pump with each beat. Chronic dehydration from alcohol means lower plasma volume, which means a smaller stroke volume, which directly leads to a lower VO2 max. Second, it interferes with your mitochondria, the powerhouses of your cells that make up your aerobic engine. Alcohol increases oxidative stress and impairs the creation of new mitochondria. Over time, your muscles develop fewer and weaker mitochondria, which lowers your aerobic capacity and puts a ceiling on your VO2 max potential. Third, alcohol disrupts your heart's ability to adapt to training. Chronic drinking can lead to a higher resting heart rate, higher blood pressure, and reduced heart rate variability. All of this makes your heart less efficient and less able to remodel itself in response to your hard work. A strong, well-adapted heart is key to a high VO2 max, and alcohol actively works against that process. Fourth, your liver's efficiency gets damaged. Your liver is the control center for storing glycogen, releasing glucose, and clearing lactate. When it's constantly forced to detoxify alcohol, it can't do its other jobs well. This means less fuel availability and slower clearance of metabolic byproducts, both of which will cap your aerobic performance. Fifth, the hormonal disruption we talked about, lower testosterone and growth hormone, higher cortisol, directly blunts your training adaptations. You recover less effectively from your workouts, so you adapt less, and your aerobic progression slows down or even stalls completely. And finally, we have to circle back to sleep. Sleep is where the magic happens. It's when your body releases hormones that build red blood cells, when mitochondria are built, and when your cardiovascular system recovers. By consistently wrecking your sleep, alcohol blunts every single mechanism that is supposed to raise your VO2 max. The research is clear. Studies consistently show that moderate to heavy drinkers have a lower VO2 max. Runners who cut back or eliminate alcohol often see their VO2 max improve within weeks. The effect is dose-dependent. The more you drink, the bigger the negative impact. So, the bottom line is this. Alcohol absolutely, unequivocally, harms your running performance. Short-term, it means higher heart rates, lower power, worse endurance, and a higher injury risk. Long-term, if you're drinking regularly, you're looking at impaired aerobic development, slower training adaptations, and a lower VO2 max potential. If you're serious about improving as a runner, alcohol is one of the biggest invisible anchors holding you back. Of course, this information is based on my own research and personal experience, and alcohol may not affect everyone in the exact same way. But the science is pretty compelling. If you want to unlock your full running potential, taking a hard look at your alcohol consumption is one of the most powerful things you can do. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, Please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more deep dives into running science. See you on the next run.